Today, I am sharing 10 of the most wearable spring 2024 fashion trends. There are a lot of trends to cover, so I'm gonna try and breeze through this, but I really wanted to hone in on what's wearable for everyday life and actually approachable. I did a deep dive through the fashion shows and a lot of the runway reports from the magazines to edit this relatable trends list for you. Make sure you watch through to the end because I have a bonus section with some honorable mentions and even more spring fashion trends to pay attention to. They may not necessarily be my cup of tea, but they are worth mentioning in case they are yours. So we're going to kick things off with boring beige. Okay. I'm wearing beige today, so I'm kind of kidding. It's not actually boring. Who, what, where called this latte dressing, which I thought that was actually much nicer. And I think I saw it elsewhere called neutrals, which is pretty self-explanatory. Now to me, this trend is like no surprise. 2024 is an election year, which means the political climate is tense and designers oftentimes play it safe when that's the case. And what could be more safe than neutrals? This trend has been going strong for a while. So the good news is, is that you don't necessarily had to go out and buy a bunch of new things, right? You probably have plenty of beige and neutrals in your closet already. My favorite trends of the season, which I hate to call a trend because I really, really like it, is this whole bows galore. I mean, I'm a girly girl and I love bows, so I hate to see it called a trend, but just know that bows are having a moment right now. I'd say the easiest way to incorporate this into your outfit is probably just getting like a cute little hair bow, but you're also gonna see plenty of bows on accessories, shoes, dresses, tops. Like it's just overall a really nice girly trend. In general, you're gonna notice that a lot of these spring trends are just very, very feminine. And so it's no surprise that bows are just kind of leaning into that. Last season, I mentioned metallics and this is still a strong trend that's kind of like carrying over into the season. I think Vogue called this one like Olympic medal which very cute and clever. I really liked that one. Anyway, you'll see a lot of metallics in both silver and in gold too. So you can kind of pick whatever one looks best for your skin tone. Now, I think that the easiest way to make this wearable is to go with an accessory, like maybe a shoe or a handbag. I would not necessarily recommend the pants because at the end of the day, that's gonna be something that's going to be kind of dated at some point in time. If you wanna do it, like definitely go for it, you do you. It, it is very trendy right now. I just don't know how much staying power that trend is going to have. I do kind of feel like if you were to go deep into that trend and get like metallic pants, that they're probably gonna look dated in a couple of years. So Vogue is calling this next trend, Pop Goes the Collar, which is just a way of saying that polo shirts are back in style. I mean, it's a preppy look. I don't really know how out of style it was. If you have preppy taste, then you probably never stopped wearing them, right? But just know that if this is something that you really like or that you're interested in, that now is definitely your moment. Now I know I'm sharing a lot of runway images, but if you wanna see me styling some of spring's hottest trends and show you how to actually incorporate these into your everyday life, just make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. The next spring fashion trend that's extremely wearable and carrying it over from the past few seasons is the continuation of wide leg trousers. You're even gonna see some seriously like crazy high versions, which is kind of a subtrend in itself, but I'm really talking about just the wide leg trousers that we've been wearing for the last few seasons. My favorite term from this one was from Who What Wear, and they called it better than joggers, which I think is exactly what this trend is. It's a nice way to kind of like step up your sweatpants game. If you're not really ready for denim, but you want to like upgrade your loungewear look, Trousers are such a good way to do so. This pants just really wearable. It's flattering on many body types. You can easily dress it up or down. And while I will say that trousers used to be reserved for the off and wear them going out, and you can even wear these when you're running errands with cute. Now, as far as my petites, don't be frustrated. I think that when it comes to wide leg trousers, you're definitely gonna probably either shop somewhere that has specifically petite clothing or get them tailored. I know it's a little bit of hassle, but listen, you want these to fit right. I know Abercrombie in particular, they carry petite sizing. I know they have some really cute wide leg trousers. I'll link them for you below and they come in like petite, regular, and tall versions too. Now, another trend to keep your eye on this season is the white dress. And to me, that's like saying springs is in style for florals. Like I feel like white dress is always kind of trending. We did see a lot of sheer white on the runway, which is not wearable in the least. I am 100% not suggesting that you go out and get one of these like nearly naked dresses because we're not going to be showing our nips, right? We're just not doing that. But you will just see a lot of white dresses in general, which I think is great if you're wearing our summer travel plans. This definitely tends to be a go-to for me. I hesitated including this next one on the list because I'm not sure it's 100% wearable, but it can be. And that's the drop waist silhouette. 
The challenge with this is it can be difficult or a little tricky to pull off to paint on your body type. It tends to be easier to pull off if you have more of a narrow waist, but if you like the drop waist and you are looking for just kind of a different silhouette, then you're definitely gonna like this one this season. Now, rather than two separate categories, I bundled the big trends together as far as color goes. And the first one, which is continuing on through the winter and honestly kind of a surprise for me, is red. And we don't see red a lot in the spring. Spring in general tends to lean like really pastel and we're still seeing a lot of it. So if you love that bold color, definitely keep wearing it. Another color that really reigns supreme is this really pretty blue. I think it can be really feminine and flattering. It's a very soft color. We have seen it before, but again, it's just gonna be very prevalent this season. As far as accessories go, I have predicted this particular trend for a while now, and it surprises me none, and that's oversized handbags. We've been leaning into these mini purses for so long. I mean, it's been like a long time going. Trends always kind of like swing in the other direction, and it's just time. It's time to shell the micro mini bags, which to be honest, they were kind of useless anyways. And now we can go back to these big oversized bags. As far as shoe trends go, flats are big. And if you want to see a separate video on the shoe trends for spring, type shoes in the comments below so that I know. We've been seeing a lot of the Mary Jane flats and the lot of ballet flats. So flats in general are something that we have been seeing. And I don't need to explain why that's wearable. Like they're flat shoes. It's pretty obvious why they're wearable. <laughs> Okay, so I do know that like what's wearable for me may not be wearable for you or vice versa. So I did want to round up some kind of like honorable mentions below. These are also really strong spring trends that you might want to keep on your radar that maybe you'll love more than I do or whatever, just giving you a couple options. First up is peplum. I have a really a mixed feeling about peplum. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I think it's kind of divisive. I feel like you either love peplum or hate it. Let me know what your team peplum or not. And I don't know, I've just kind of always been a little undecided about this trend. I have had, I think, two peplum tops over the years. It's been a long time since I've worn peplum, but it's it's coming back apparently. The next one is also a little divisive, I feel like, and I'm not that surprised because kick flare, let's see if you can guess this one. Kick flare has been in style for a while and it's been really trendy and things just keep going up. And now we've got capris coming back. Oh my goodness. So. Yeah, are you into capris? Let me know. Again, I don't know how I feel about this one. I feel like the last time I wore capris was like back in high school. Now one trend that I don't think is wearable for basically anybody is this micro minis. So the no pants trend has evolved. That's good news. The no pants trend basically evolved into these micro minis. And I'm actually seeing a lot of these micro mini skirts and micro mini shorts. I already see them on Revolve. I'm sure I've got images going here. So I guess people are thinking that this is, I mean, it is more wearable than no pants at all to have these teeny tiny, teeny tiny little bit of coverage. But I mean, this is definitely one that I am going to be skipping out on. Colorful sneakers are also having a moment and I mean, we've really been on this train of sneakers in general, a lot of white, a lot of neutrals. So if you're ready to like punch things up and be a little bit more bold, then you might like this trend. And I don't think I can do a spring fashion trends video without talking about florals. I know florals always trend for spring. I mean, it's predictable. That's why they made fun of it in the movie, right? So. This spring, I will say that the florals that we're seeing are a little bit different. We've seen like a lot of the rosettes and the feminine details carrying over from fall. I mean, I mentioned this, it's in itself like a little bit earlier in the video that a lot of the trends that we're seeing are really leaning into that whole feminine aesthetic. The whole vibe is a lot of florals, some really light floaty sheer fabrics. You're seeing a lot of drapey silhouettes. Again, going back to the bows, I kind of listed these as separate trends, but overall, I think you'll notice that there is kind of leaning into an overall feminine aesthetic with a lot of the trends that we're noticing for so spring. I do have some outfits to share with you that incorporate a lot of these trends. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss that video. And let me know in the comments below which one of these is your favorite trends and what you'll be wearing this season. I'd love to know, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.